Every trading strategy has two important building blocks, and that is entries and exits. A strategy entry gets you into a long or short position in a commodity future or stock or bond, and an exit gets you out of that position. So let's look at the 10 greatest of all time entries that you can be using to build profitable systematic trading strategies. And make sure you stick around to the end of this video because we'll be going through the GOAT trading entry. So the greatest trading strategy entries, let's get into it. Hi everyone, this is Dave Whitcomb from Peak Trading Research in Geneva, Switzerland. My goal is to make you a more profitable trader with commodity market insights and real systematic trading strategies. And today we're going through the number one most important part of profitable systematic trading, and that is the best strategy entries. Now, what makes these the greatest trading entries? You are gonna see these trading entries time and time again in the strategies that we build at peakalgo.com. You'll see them in systematic strategy books. You'll see them in YouTube videos online. And most importantly, you'll find yourself falling back on these strategy entries as a great foundation upon which you can build more complicated systematic strategies. Bottom line, they work. You're going to see them a lot. And most of the strategies you build and trade will rely on these basic strategy entries. Now, as always, we'll be going through these strategies written in the easy language coding language but focus more on the strategy logic, what the strategy is trying to do, and less on the specific code. So if you want to recreate what these strategies are doing in Python or R or C++ or Microsoft Excel, you can do that. These strategy concept entries are universal. For our first strategy entry, let's look at a simple price pattern. What this strategy does is it says if the close of the last bar was greater than the open of the last bar and the close two bars ago was greater than the open two bars ago and the close three bars ago was greater than the open then buy next bar at market so buy upward momentum and vice versa if you have lower closes for three bars in a row then sell short the next bar at market now one of the advantages of course of coding this up and adding it to a platform like tradestation is that we can see how this strategy works on a chart so here we have three lower bars the strategy sells short we have three rising bars the strategy goes long this strategy on crude oil 240 minute bars has been working pretty well well recently the strategy successfully bought upward momentum sold upward momentum bought upward momentum and sold downward momentum now for our next strategy entry let's look at a simple breakout this works well for markets that trend so what this strategy does is it says if the market close of the last bar is the highest close of the past 10 bars then buy the next bar at market and if the market close is the lowest close of the past 10 bars then sell short at market so again it's a different way to buy upward momentum and sell downward momentum and we can see what this strategy looks like on a chart let's add this to a gold 240 minute bar chart we can see that when we're at the highest close of the past 10 bars the system goes long when we're at the lowest close of the past 10 bars the system sells short gold Old futures system chopped around a little bit here bought then sold then bought and then here it went short again at the lowest bar of the last 10 bars and successfully made a nice short trade now this is a good opportunity for us to add our very first input so we can add an input called length x and replace our static value of 10 bars with our new input and this allows us to optimize this input value in tradestation and tradestation will tell us instead of 10 the best value to use between 5 and 15 is going to be a value of 5 so if we optimize for net profit we can see that actually a value of 5 is better than 10 for buying higher high and selling lower lows. We can see the system is doing pretty well here in terms of buying higher highs, selling lower lows. It's catching some nice moves 
on gold 240 minute bars. Now let's look at a simple mean reversion entry. This is for markets that mean revert. So unlike our breakout strategy that buys higher closes, in this case, we are going to be selling short the highest close of the last X bars. So this was our breakout strategy. Instead of buying a higher close, we are going to sell short. And instead of selling short on a lower close, we're going to be buying. So again, selling short a higher close, buying a lower close. And if we add our strategy, our mean reversion strategy entry to a mean reverting market like the Coco market, this is Coco daily bars, we can see that this simple mean reversion strategy that buys lower closes, sells higher closes, buys lower closes, sells higher closes, has been working exceptionally well in a mean reverting sideways trading market environment. For our next Next strategy entry, let's look at using a market indicator like trading volume or RSI momentum or MACD momentum or ADX momentum as a requirement before buying lower closes or selling short higher closes. Basically, this trading system is looking for a low volume or a low momentum reversal as a signal to trade. We can see what this looks like in feeder cattle, which is a smaller market in which volume is an important indicator for the next direction of the market. This system does a nice job of selling short higher closes, buying lower closes when volume is also dropping at the same time. We can see that the system has performed fairly well over the past year. We see a nice upward sloping cumulative profit line, an upward sloping equity curve. For our next strategy entry, let's look at dueling momentum. And this will be the first time that we incorporate a second strategy input called length two. So in this case, we are going to be going with short term momentum, in this case, 15 bar momentum against long term momentum, for example, 50 bar momentum. So how does this strategy work if the most recent close is above the close 15 bars ago, but still below the close 50 bars ago, the strategy will buy the next buyer at market and vice versa if the most recent close is below the close 15 bars ago, but above the close 50 bars ago, the strategy will sell short next bar at market. If we add our dueling momentum strategy to an orange juice 230 minute bar chart, we can see how this dueling momentum strategy works. The strategy is buying when prices are low, but near term momentum's turning higher and it's selling short when prices are high, but near term momentum is turning lower. And if we look at a strategy performance report, we can see a nice upward sloping equity curve over the past 10 years. This dueling momentum approach in orange juice futures has performed pretty well. For our next strategy entry, let's look at using a date to trade. This is the foundation for trading price seasonals. What this strategy does is the strategy will buy if the date crosses over September 1st, 2022. It will do the same thing for 2021 and the same thing for 2020. This is good for a market like corn, which is seasonally bullish. Corn futures tend to rise in September and October and November during US harvest months. We can add a simple bars sense entry exit it to this strategy to get a sense for what it looks like on a chart. So what this system is doing is again, buying corn futures on September 1st, 2020, on September 1st, 2021, and again on September 1st of this year, 2022, and exiting that position 90 days later. Now you might ask why use this 
date crosses over code instead of just if the date equals September 1st. The reason for that is if your September 1st falls on a weekend or a holiday, you still want TradeStation to pick up a trading signal for the next open session. By coding if date crosses over September 1st, you're allowing TradeStation to do that. Now, if you want access to an Excel spreadsheet with a version of this seasonal code that allows you to optimize for getting into a trade before and after a specific date, as well as being able to optimize how long to stay in that trade, just shoot me an email insight at peaktradingresearch.com and I will send that over to you. For our next strategy entry, let's use the day of the week to trade. For example, let's always go long on Wednesdays. What this strategy does is it says if the day of the week is day number two, that's Tuesday, then buy the next bar at market, that's Wednesday. And if the date of the week is number three, that's Wednesday, set the exit on close. So another way to say that is get in on the open on Wednesday, get out at the close on Wednesday. And if we add this strategy to a soybean daily bar chart, we can see how this strategy works. The strategy is buying the open on Wednesdays. It's getting out on the close on Wednesdays. Now this strategy worked really well in 2021 and early 2022 when energy markets were rallying. You had generally bullish statistics from the Department of Energy released on Wednesdays. So Wednesday was generally a good day of the week to be long soybean futures. For our next strategy entry, we're gonna be incorporating an external data set to trade. Now, this external data set can be anything that has a date and a value. For example, it could be the rainfall in Iowa for the past 10 years. It could be the value of cash French wheat for the past 10 years, or as one one of my favorite indicators, we can use the commitment of traders, the COT report, net hedge fund position for a specific market. This could help us determine if hedge funds, the speculators in commodity markets, are extended short or they're extended long in a particular market. So this is what our strategy entry code that incorporates an external data set looks like. For example, we will look at a situation situation in which the hedge fund net long position, the hedge fund non-commercial net position is above a value of 20,000 contracts short. In that case, we are going to look to sell short the next bar at the lowest low of the past two bars stop. We're going to look to sell downward momentum if we're above that threshold. Now, TradeStation has this non-commercial net position as a code that we can simply enter like this. And to make this a realistic, complete strategy, we'll simply add a line of code that says, we will get out if bar sense entry is greater than 10 bars. We can now add this external data set strategy to a wheat daily bar chart in TradeStation. And we can see what the strategy is doing. It is going short on lower momentum only if the non commercial position is above a certain threshold. So if hedge funds are extended long in wheat, then and only then will the system start trying to sell front month wheat futures for a profit. Now incorporating an external data set to trade, especially if that data set is based on a fundamental value, something like the cash value of a commodity or a supply and demand balance sheet value or a weather value, that is increasingly being called quantum mentals trading. That is using a fundamental value as a threshold or a prerequisite for establishing a quantitative trading position. If you work for a commodity hedge fund or a big commodity trading house, you need to be familiar with this style of quantum mentals trading. Our next strategy entry is a moving average crossover entry, and it's the first time that we'll be using variable 
variables to establish a trading position. A strategy variable is a dynamic value or an equation that we can easily reference later in our strategy and keep the strategy more simple. In this case, we'll be defining our moving average short variable as the average close of a short length and our moving average long variable as the average close of a longer length. If the shorter moving average crosses over the longer moving average, then buy next bar at market and vice versa. If the shorter moving average crosses under the longer moving average, then sell short next bar at market. And now we can look at what this strategy looks like on a heating oil daily bar chart. We can also add those moving average lines to our chart to really see when they cross over. We can see what the strategy is doing. When the short term moving average crosses below the long term, the strategy gets short. And when the short term crosses up through the long term, the strategy gets long. And if we look at a performance report, that's not too bad for a simple moving average crossover strategy that is always in the market. This moving average crossover approach has done pretty well given the big market swings that we've seen in heating oil futures over the past two years. So we've walked through nine exceptional systematic strategy entries. It's time to look at the GOAT, the greatest of all time strategy entry. This is a simple breakout entry that works well across a lot of different markets, especially breakout commodity markets like crude oil, heating oil, gasoline, soybeans, soybean meal, lean hogs, gold, and silver. So let's look at our GOAT breakout strategy code. There it is. This is the greatest of all time strategy entries. It's a simple stop breakout. It is buying the next bar at the highest high of the past 10 bars on a stop, and it is selling short the next bar at the lowest lows of the past 10 bars on a stop. Now you'll often hear traders talk about stopping out of a position. This strategy stops you into a position, meaning if the price prints at or above the highest high of the past 10 bars, the strategy will enter immediately. It will not wait to execute at the next bar at market. It will execute immediately. And if we add our GOAT breakout strategy to a gasoline 240 minute bar chart, we can get a real sense for how this strategy trades. If the market is breaking lower and sees the lowest level of the past 10 bars, it stops into a short position. It gets in immediately. And if the market is turning higher and prints the highest level of the past 10 bars, the strategy will stop into a long position immediately. We can see that this breakout strategy has done a very nice job of catching some of the big swings that we've seen in gasoline futures recently. And if we look at a longer term performance chart, look at that. That is a nice upward sloping equity curve. This approach of buying higher highs and selling lower lows with stops has worked exceptionally well over the past decade in gasoline futures. You now have 10 great strategy entries that you can use over and over again to develop some really exceptional systematic trading strategies. Even more complicated systematic trading strategies with dozens of lines of code and different filters and variables and exits often rely on these very simple strategy entries as the foundation. And of course, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel because coming up next, we'll be doing the greatest strategy exits. So good luck with these trading entries. Let me know in the comments below what you come up with and we'll see you soon.